Hello and welcome to this fourth lecture in this lecture series on CCNA4 with me, Joakim Schauderstad from the University of Skövde. Uh, what, we were looking, what we will be looking at today is access control lists. So it's basically content that we will revisit from uh, CCNA2, but whatever, let's do it again. And we will uh, we'll actually add some material because the CCNA2 doesn't cover IPv6 ACLs that much and it doesn't, uh, doesn't cover extended access control lists. So we'll uh, put a little bit more focus on that uh, in this course. So what we will look at in more detail is the perfect purpose of ACLs, the different types of ACLs, some implementation guidelines, both Cisco's and my ideas about that. And then of course we will look at some configuration and troubleshooting and have some nice demonstrations. So what is an ACL in, in essence? Well, there is a lot of traffic going on out on the internet and as I'm sure you understand, there is a lot of traffic that we don't want our uh, clients to send out and there is a lot of traffic that we don't want into our network. And we can use ACLs for this. So in this context, ACLs are basically traffic filters that can permit or deny uh, traffic based on different purposes. So for instance, if we have a router up here uh, that is uh, connected to the internet, we can create a, a filter or an ACL that will deny traffic based on different layer, two, uh, layer three and four properties. So for instance, we can uh, either deny certain types of traffic and we can deny certain IP addresses to send traffic to us. Um, so in essence, uh, ACLs are traffic filters that can filter traffic based on uh, layer three and four. So on uh, IP addresses, source and destination IP addresses, and on uh, destination port numbers, and on what protocol that is used like TCP, UDP, ICMP, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, um, every ACL, something that we need to know about is that every ACL will end with an implicit deny, meaning that an empty ACL will in effect deny any traffic. So I'm just gonna, sp uh, I'm just gonna speed through this a little bit. Uh, in terms of logic, when we apply ACLs, we do apply them to interfaces. Uh, we can also apply them to the v uh, virtual terminal lines. So we can have an ACL that restricts who, it, who, who is, that is allowed to access the router using Telnet or SSH. But it's, in essence, we apply them to interfaces. And then we can either uh, apply them inbound or outbound to an interface. And inbound filtering, that means that we filter packages coming into the interface, and this is before they are routed to the outbound interface. So inbound filtering will happen before any of the routing processes takes place. But we can also filter outbound, which means that we are filtering packages after they have been routed on the way out from the router, and then it's regardless of the inbound interface. So ideally, of course, you understand that we want to put our ACLs inbound, but in some cases we have to put them outbound, and that is uh, depending on the network topologies and what we want to achieve, of course. And um, so an access control list is basically made up from access control entries or different rules and any rule can either be allow or deny in the world uh, that we are living in now uh, and one single rule is expressed using an IP address and a wildcard subnet mask. Uh, this is true for IPv4 whereas when we use IPv6 they are instead expressed using the IPv6 address and the slash, uh, slash prefix length notation instead. Uh, and uh, something that you should know by now is that a wildcard mask is basically the opposite of a subnet mask. So the zeros in the wildcard mask decides what bits of the IP address that should be considered when matching. Uh, if you want to have an example of subnet mask calculation, if you have a what you basically do to get these uh, wildcard mask for a subnet mask is that you take uh, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, and then you subtract the uh, net mask. So if you have a slash 24 network, the subnet mask would be 000255. And um, let's just dig into some implementation guidelines. So something that we need to know is that we can have one list per interface, uh, of course, and then per direction, inbound or outbound, and then per protocol, either IPv4 or IPv6. So with two interfaces and two protocols running, uh, this round through in our example here could have a total of eight separate, uh, separate ACLs applied. Uh, and there is some rules for this, and that is that ACLs should be used uh, in firewalls that are, uh, that are positioned between your network and the internet. Uh, you may 
have uh, ACLs on internal routers when needed depending on your filtering rule uh, but the overall goal is to deny traffic as early on as possible because if, uh, if there is traffic that should not be allowed to reach its destination well then you should remove it from your network as early as possible uh, primarily for performance issues of course. So some of the guidelines that are issued by Cisco is that you should uh, base your ACLs on the security policy of your organization well, that goes without saying. You should prepare a description of what you want your ACLs to do. And well, this is to help you avoid uh, creating uh, access problems because what we will do is that we will uh, go ahead and create a lot of access rules saying that some people can't do some things. Uh, a very nice way uh, to actually work with the ACLs is to use a text editor to create, edit and save the ACLs because once they're up and running in the router, it's a little bit uh, tricky to input new rules. Uh, and also using a text editor and saving them as text files will create a library of reusable uh, ACLs. And then it's a good idea to test your ACLs on a development network before you implement them uh, in a production network because, well, uh, people do mistakes and you don't want to do the mistake that cuts your entire company off the internet. Uh, so as for the placement, uh, Cisco says that you should place standard uh, access control lists as close to the, uh, to the destination as possible and ACLs as close to the source as possible. What I say is that you should always try to configure ACLs so that you may place them as close to the source as possible so that you block traffic early on. But there is also uh, uh, another rule that, uh, that, that may bend these laws and that is that you should, uh, you should try to go for some uh, simplicity because if you place ACLs on every router in your in your network it's going to be a hell to maintain those so if you have a situation where you may uh, place an ACL a little bit further away from the source but it allows you to do one instead of two or three well then I would say it's a good call to place it on that router instead. Um, so uh, ACLs are in Cisco uh, on Cisco gear comes in two different flavors, standard and extended. Uh, standard ACLs can filter traffic based on source, address and port number, uh, whereas ex extended ACLs can also include destination addresses in the filtering. Uh, and this is quite important to know about. So let's go in to look at how we can create those. So creating standard, I actually said something wrong now because standard ACLs cannot, uh, uh, cannot filter on port number they can just filter on this on source ip address if you want to filter on port numbers you need to have the extended acls so standard acls that is source uh, uh, standard acls that is source address only and it's a good thing that i noticed this so source address only and extended acls also include destination address and port number in the filtering so Sorry for that, and let's move on. So if we wanna create standard access control lists, uh, we can do this in, a in two different ways. Either we use the command access list and then an access list number, and then we just write in the rules as we go. So either den uh, deny, permit, or remark, and then uh, the source address, and then the source wildcard mask, and that is it. Uh, and then we make the rules, uh, or an example of this would be to make access list 10, permit host, and then an IP address. If we do it this way, uh, what we actually do is add rules to an ACL. I think that this way is a little bit weird. What I prefer to do is just go with IP access list standard, and then I can input a number or a name, so I can give it a name instead. And then we actually get into the ACL configuration mode. And in here, we just go permit host or permit or deny whatever we wanna do. So for instance, we can do permit host uh, or we can permit a network or we can deny something. Uh, what you should know here is that host is a keyword that can be used instead of the host wildcard mask and any is a keyword that can be used to well match any. Um, Creating extended access control lists is basically the same. Either we can go with the first version that I find very tricky, uh, and in this case we would go access list and then an access list number. That should be above 99, uh, because 1 to 99, that, that's for standard ACLs, and above 99 is for, is for extended. Uh, and then we can input a protocol, uh, deny permit or remark, and then the source, then the destination, uh, and then an operator, and then a port. So for instance, we can do uh, access list 110, uh, permit, uh, TCP, 
uh, any any equals to 80. So we can also do it uh, the other way, IP access list extended and the number or name and get into the uh, to the ACL configuration mode and then input our statements. For instance, permit IP uh, something something, permit TCP something something, and we can add port numbers here as well. So how do we go apply those two interfaces? Well, uh, once we created our access list, what we do is that we uh, give it either a name or a number. We can go into an interface and then we use the command IP access group and then uh, the number or name of the ACL and then the direction. So for instance, if we do an access list with the number one and we want to apply it outbound to serial interface 000, what we would do is go into that interface and then we type IP access group one out. So uh, I actually think that a better way to talk about uh, ACLs and a way to configure them uh, without it all getting too messy is that we go and do a demonstration. So what we will do now is go and look at demonstration 4.2.2.12 uh, where we will actually do some access control lists. Uh, discard annotations and we'll go into Packet Tracer and we want that one and we want the instructions. Uh, so what we're going to do here now is that we will create one single access control list on router one. Uh, access control, yeah, that's the name. Sounded weird eventually. <laughs> sounded weird at once. So what we're going to do is that we go into router one and we're going to create ourselves an access control list that has, uh, I think, three different purposes. So first, it's going to block. PC1 from accessing some servers on HTTP, then PC2 is going to be blocked from doing FTP, and PC3 is going to be blocked from uh, pinging if I'm correct. Uh, so the way we do this is that we go into the CLI, and as always, we go into configuration terminal, and we start doing our access list. So what we do is here, uh, I choose to do it the IP access list extended way. Uh, we need extended because we're going to sort uh, not just on source address, but also on destination address and port number. So we do IP access list extended and let's just call it block. Uh, so now that's done. Uh, we're first going to make sure that PC1 uh, cannot access server one and two on HTTP or HTTPS. So let's go up and look in the addressing table and see what networks and IP addresses we have. Uh, and since the idea here is to make blocking st statements, let's just begin from top to bottom. And we're going to make a deny statement and we'll do this one for this first one slow together with a question mark. So once we did done deny, we can have TCP, IP, ICMP, and so on and so forth. Since we're going to include port numbers, I'm gonna go ahead and do TCP. Next, we're going to have the source address, and this is going to be a single host. So I'm gonna use the host keyword and then the address of PC1, which is 172.31.1.101. And then I am going to have a destination address. Uh, the destination in this case is server one. So I'm going to make go ahead and make 64.101.255.254. And next we need to add that it should be about HTTP. So uh, we'll go ahead and take the question mark and see what we can do. Destination wildcard bits. Um, okay, let's just type host in front of it. So it, to make it quick. And then we take the question mark and now we can uh, take EQ to match only package on a given port number as you see here. So we go EQ and again we take the question mark and now you see that we can either specify port number or we have some keywords that we can use. So for HTTP we can just type in www but we also needed to have HTTPS and we don't have a keyword for that. So I'm just going to have to specify 443. So that's it for server one. Now I'm going to do arrow up and change the IP address for server two, which is uh, the same, but 103 in the second octet instead of 101. So I'm doing it for HTTPS and then I'm doing it for HTTP and then that should be it.
So the idea is that we should build more here. So what we should do now is to make sure that PC2 uh, is denied from accessing the server on FTP. So we're just going to do that real quick. Again, it's deny, it's TCP, it's a host that's going to be denied, the destination or the, the source host, which is PC2. Uh, it has the IP address of 172.16, uh, not 172.31.1.102. Uh, the server is also a host and it's 64.101.255.254 and then it's the port number so we're gonna go EQ and then it was FTP uh, we can just type in FTP because there's a keyword for that so we'll do that arrow up and do the other server and the FTP part is done so last but not least, I'm going to deny PC3 from being able to ping to server one and two. Uh, I'm going to do this in one statement that actually fills both of those so that I have to practice doing those wildcard masks. Uh, so then again, it's deny. And if we take the arrow here, we can see that we actually have a, a protocol for ICMP. So we can do deny IC, ICMP. And then it's the source address again. So it's host, and this time it's 172.31.1.103. Uh, and then I'm going to do a network for the servers. So I'm actually going to do uh, network 64 slash 8. So in this case, I'm going to type 600000, and then I'm going to have a wildcard mask of 0255. 255, 255, which actually covers both of those servers. And now, since I'm going to block ping, I might as well just block all of the ICMP stuff. And you can see that, uh, well, I can go echo or echo reply, but I'll just take all of them. So I'll just hit enter here. And now I will have a uh, access list of with all of those statements. So first up, you can see here that I have the 44 port 80 and port 443, then I have the FTP statements, and then I have the ping statement uh, on the very bottom. So now let's see where to position this. Uh, or actually, something that I almost forgot is that I have to add a permit statement, permit any any, because as you know, uh, uh, there is an implicit deny at the, at the bottom. So now that I have a list that only contains deny statements, it would be, be a deny uh, everything for everything if I didn't do this. So I do permit IP any any at the very bottom. So now I have a list that ends with a permit statement. And um, so last and final thing, I want to apply this and I said apply it as close to the source as possible, right? So we'll go ahead and apply it on gigabit ethernet 01. So then we go uh, exit interface Gigabit Ethernet 01, IP, access group, what did I call it, block, and inbound, because now it's going to be for traffic coming in on this interface. And I'm going to hit enter, and now we're going to do some stuff here. So I'll start with uh, sending a ping from PC1. This is something... Ugh. This is something that should work, so if I go from desktop and take out a command prompt, uh, I should be able to uh, ping one of the servers. Ping 64.101.255.254. Hope it works, or otherwise I screwed something up. It takes some time, and the first ping usually fails. This is due to ARP requests, so you can see that everything works here. But if I take the same address and I try to instead use a web browser to access it, so I try to go 64, 101, 255, 254, then it's, uh, then it's actually going to work. So that's a little bit uh, iffy. Did I write something wrong or did I just do something erroneous? So let's go do, uh, do show, uh, uh, show IP access list again. You can see that there are actually uh, no and uh, you should be able to see here if we had any matches on one of them. So let's see if I apply this to an incorrect interface. 
yeah, you can see here in the table that it should be gigabit ethernet 00. zero. Very funny. So I'll go back into face gigabit ethernet 00, zero and do the IP access group block in again. And now if I try to access the web page, well, you're not gonna see if it fails or succeeds. So let's just block that out and try to input the address again. 64, 101, 255, 254. And now you, okay, not very impressive. But if I hit go now, you can see that it doesn't succeed. And if I go back here and do uh, take a do show IP access group again, you can see that now I have matches to this above statement on that blocks this hosts from accessing that machine. So if I again go into the command prompt and tries to ping, the ping will still work. And then you should see some matches on the bottom rule that is permit IP any any. Uh, so very funny to have me failing a little bit. I guess that is the uh, the switch port that we see right there and the other one is overlapping i can't move to verify that well anyway let's go back to the lecture and talk a little bit about uh, modifying uh, uh, access lists and doing access lists for ipv6 so i'm going to chew th through that away and we'll go back into the lecture slides so when you're done with your access lists you may want to modify them uh, and modification of access lists, well, that can be uh, that can actually be a little bit tricky. So perhaps the most common way that you would do it is to just copy them out to a text editor, as you see in this example, and then input whatever new statements you want, and then you just remove the old access list uh, using no access list and the name or number for that access list, and then you uh, copy it in from scratch. Uh, another way is that you can leverage what you saw when I did show access list as in step one here is that every rule actually gets a number. So here we have an access list with two enters in it. And the first one is called 10 and the second one is called 20. Uh, what we can do is uh, if we do, uh, if we enter configuration mode with uh, IP access list standard or extended and the number. So in this case, IP access list standard one is that we can actually uh, either use uh, the numbers to just remove an individual statement, for instance, no 10. We can also just uh, type a number before the statement. So if we do 10 and deny host, then uh, whatever rule we write will be number 10. If we want to add a new rule in between 10 and 20, we can do 15 and then type a rule. Uh, so that's it. And that is what they sh show in this case where you see that we have a ACL with 10 and 20. And then we go IP access list standard no access and then 15 deny host. Uh, and then you will see that that rule that we do here with number 15 ends up in the ACL as number 15. So very nice. Uh, uh, in a way to verify, as I showed you, you can do show IP interface to see if it's, uh, the ACL is applied. Uh, show access list that provides a nice overview of the ACLs and also shows what ACs that had packages matching. So that is something that I really urge you to do. And then uh, remember that you can apply ACLs to uh, VTY lines uh, to secure SSH. And, that, and you do that using access clause and the ACL number and then in. So let's have a, look, a quick look at IPv6 access lists. Uh, so the differences between IPv6 and IPv4 are that when we are talking about IPv6, we only have named and extended ACLs. So that is very convenient, not so much to keep track about. Uh, you apply them to interfaces using a, li uh, a slightly different way, so a way, of course, to make things complicated. The command here is IPv6 traffic filter. Um, then you do the wildcard masks, uh, or you don't do the wildcard mask. Instead, you do the slash notation with the prefix length. Uh, and then you should also know that IPv6 uh, access lists does include implicit permit statements for router solicitation and neighbor discovery messages. Uh, they also include the default deny statement, of course. So looking uh, very briefly on the configuration, the, what you have to do here is use IPv6 access list and then an access list name. And then it's just going to be a listing of permit or deny statements where you have permit or deny, uh, the protocol, 
uh, the source IPv uh, v6 uh, prefix and prefix length. And then you can do this any host port numbers, so on and so forth, just as you do with IPv4. So it's basically expressing the address that is just a tiny bit, uh, tiny bit different. So let's have a demonstration on IPv6 before we move on to the very last slide of this demonstration. Uh, and what we're going to do in this case is that we're actually going to create, uh, well, I'm just going to create one ACL just for demonstration purposes, and then you can do, uh, go ahead and do the rest on your own. So what I want to do here is create an ACL that prohibits PC1 from accessing the web services of server 3. Uh, so the way that I would go ahead and do that is just go into the CLI again, just as we did before, configuration terminal, and then I go IPv6, access list, and uh, then call it something like HTTP, and hit enter. So now again, I will just start building my, uh, building my rules. So I can do, uh, I, what I would do is go, and, uh, go ahead and do a deny statement. So I will do uh, deny, uh, TCP any host um, okay let's let's see what I'm actually gonna do here uh, so I feel that I'm reading all too much what I'm gonna do is block PC1 from accessing server 3 uh, or what I'm actually gonna do is block uh, PC1 from accessing the network here so deny TCP and then I'm going to have the source address which is going to be a host the host that is PC1. Uh, let's see what uh, IP address PC1 has. Uh, I'm not allowed to see that, so let's go into PC1 and go to the desktop. Uh, now, add the IP configuration, and you can see that this is the IPv6 address. Let's keep that over there. So, the night TCP host, and then we have uh, 2001 db8 colon 1 colon 10, colon, colon 10, and that's all, all that I need to do. Then the next part that I need to do is to express the destination network, and the destination network is going to be this one. So what I will do then is take 201, db8, colon 1, colon 30, colon, colon, slash 64. So that is the destination network, and then I will also take EQ and www, uh, and I will also include HTTPS, so that's 443, and then since this will be a deny everything in the whole wild world, uh, world as it is now, I will also go ahead and, uh, and add a permit IP any any, so that I'm changing the logic of this ACL to be a permit all instead of deny all at the very end. The last thing I have to do is go into uh, the correct interface. Let's see if I manage this, this a little bit different, better this time. I'm actually going to take the serial interface just to be so, to be sure. If Packet Tracer would be so glad, so pleased as to tell me where it is. So it's serial zero zero zero. And I will go take exit, and then we'll take interface serial zero zero zero, and then I will take IPv6. IPv6 traffic filter and remember what I called it HTTP and then it's going to be outbound because now it's when things are going out on this interface it happens right so we'll just gonna hit uh, enter and now I'll see that it worked so first of all a PC1 should still be able to ping PC3 and that's successful but if it tries to uh, enter the uh, web address of of the server, it should not be able to. So again, we go into PC1 desktop and we open a web browser and we hit enter. And as you can see, it doesn't work. Let's again show some verification. So we go do show IPv6 access list. And you can see here that I have some matches on the deny statement for www. And I also have a permit from the ping that I did before, which still works. Uh, so that is it for this demonstration. Let's just sum everything up within the uh, within our uh, PowerPoint. So some troubleshooting. First of all, remember that every ACL will end with an implicit deny statement unless we do this permit IP any any. 
So what this means is that an ACL with only deny statements will deny all traffic. You should also know that ACLs are always evaluated from top to bottom, so the first match will decide what happens to a package uh, and then not care about the rules that comes after. So if you have a access list that says deny any any, uh, then it's going to deny any traffic no matter how many permit statements you have beneath. Uh, also remember that income inbound ACLs will handle uh, incoming traffic and outbound ACLs will handle outgoing traffic. And I really emphasize using this show IP or IPv6 access list command. With that, you can see what rules that were matched and so on and so forth, and it's very useful. So this was it for this uh, ACL lecture. Uh, I'll see you next time when we get back for chapter five. Thank you so much.